This is a discussion of uh, a second order system and the, uh, the, where the roots are for that system uh, and how that looks when you go and map them on the complex plane. Um, so a second order transfer function is given here and uh, this is standard. We have uh, actually three parameters that characterize the second order system. The steady state gain, which is K, uh, the natural frequency, which is omega n, and then zeta, which is the damping ratio. Uh, so we start off and we get the characteristic equation you know, for this system, and you get that simply by getting the denominator of the system and setting it equal to zero, as shown. Uh, and then uh, we use the, uh, the quadratic formula uh, that has this form. There's our uh, second order equation, and if we want the roots of that second, second order equation, uh, we use this uh, quadratic formula. Uh, so if we plug in our values from above, uh, this is our b, which was the coefficient of the s, s term. Uh, and then this is uh, uh, b squared uh, plus 4ac. a is 1, so 4 times c. And c above, as you can see here, is omega n squared over 2a. <clears throat> a is 1 again. So uh, we do some manipulation there. Uh, uh, we square that and uh, then we do some factoring and we can pull 2 omega n outside of the square root. So we do that. Uh, and then, let's see, where was I here? Yeah, I, w I wind up with this equation here on the bottom uh, and then uh, can continue with that. Now, uh, various things can happen that depend upon the uh, value of zeta. So that's what we're going to look at next. <clears throat> if zeta is greater than 1, then what happens is uh, that equation that we had here, uh, this number right here will be greater than 1, and therefore it's real. Uh, we'll have a double root because it's a square uh, root. But uh, the way the roots will look, so it would be uh, two real roots that are centered about this, uh, uh, this value right here, uh, zeta times omega n. And then we'll go to the right and to the left of that by this amount, omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Okay, now, uh, if zeta is less than 1, then uh, what we can do is we can factor out a negative 1 out of here, which switches the order of that, and that's what I've done uh, right here. Uh, and so we uh, break that up into two radicals. <clears throat> and uh, recall that uh, the square root of negative 1 is i or j. We traditionally use, traditionally use j in controls. So uh, we can rewrite uh, the case of uh, zeta less than 1 like so. And what that means is that uh, we, we have two roots. Uh, they both have the same real part. And uh, then uh, we have a positive and a negative imaginary part. So what this means is when uh, two complex numbers have the same real root, uh, the same imaginary uh, real part, and the same imaginary part that's uh, plus and minus, those are called complex conjugates. Okay. And uh, then omega n is always positive. So um, uh, we uh, said above, is if zeta is less than 1, normally zeta is positive, too. And if that's the case, then uh, what that means is that the real part of the two uh, complex conjugates is negative. Uh, this will produce an oscillatory response. And the frequency of oscillation is the coefficient of the uh, j term. So uh, we actually give that a name. Uh, it's called the damp natural frequency. So the system does not uh, oscillate at its natural frequency. It oscillates at the damp natural frequency. But as you can see here, uh, since zeta is uh, less than 1, this number will be less than 1. And so uh, omega d is less than omega n, which means that the effect of the damping is to actually slow the system down. Now we have some other cases that are interesting. Uh, if zeta is equal to 1, let's go back up to our original equation, which was here. Oops, sorry. Uh, zeta is equal to 1. This disappears here, and of course that goes away too. So uh, we wind up with, um, let's see, uh, 
with this uh, here. Oh, huh, I should have taken the zeta out because zeta is equal to one. Uh, so we wind up with a uh, uh, a real root at omega n. Um, and it's, uh, well, I'll show this in a picture in a minute, okay? Uh, it's, it says that there's only one root because uh, if we go back to our equation, here we go, we're going to jump over this little thing again. Uh, the imaginary part disappears, so z equals 1, this goes away, uh, and we're left just with omega n. Um, and it looks like we just have one root, but uh, the characteristic equation, which was up here, uh, is a quadratic, which means we have to have two roots. So how do we explain this dilemma? Well, uh, we have two repeated roots uh, at, omega, at negative omega n. Okay, since the roots are real, uh, the system does not oscillate. And this is actually the situation that's called a critically damped uh, case. Case three is the case of critical damping. So we have two repeated real roots. And real roots mean you have no oscillation. Uh, to have oscillation, you have to have imaginary roots. Okay, now, if zeta is equal to zero, which is another special case, let me go back to my equation again. If zeta equals zero, this part goes away altogether, and then uh, we wind up with uh, uh, zero here, so this becomes just j times omega n. Uh, so that's case four. Uh, and since it's a square root, it's going to be plus minus j omega n. So uh, we have two complex roots, but the real part of those roots is zero. And that means that we'll have oscillation because we have complex roots, and the oscillation frequency will be omega n. Okay? Um, uh, also, if you look at the, uh, the equation for omega d, if zeta is equal to zero, omega n and omega d are the same thing. And this is the uh, undamped case, so there's no uh, damping and the system will oscillate forever. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to stop here and actually start up a new uh, video to describe this figure because this figure is uh, somewhat complicated.